Welcome back to Cashflow Convos. Today we're joined by the CEO of Luxury Supercar Rentals, Ahmed. How you doing, brother? Good, brother. How you doing? Yeah, all good, man. Thank um, you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, appreciate your time. Nice. Likewise, appreciate your time. Um, so tell us, how did you start this company? I started in 2018. Uh, I came to Dubai on a holiday and uh, I fell in love basically with the country. And uh, I was renting cars at Five Palm. And okay. every time I was renting cars, there was nothing available. Uh, I want another car, Ferrari, not available. So yeah. I go to the worker, what's going on? He's like to me, we're very busy. It's a good business. Why don't you do something like this? I can help you. I can work for you. So I said, okay, no problem. I, I go, for me right now, I've got business going on in Australia. I can't really move right now. I have too many things going good there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the type of person that can leave my family, especially my mom, my dad. I'm very close with them. So I went back. I went back to work and I'm still living the, the Dubai dream. You know, in my head, I'm still thinking of how Dubai is, of a country. Mm -hmm. So I started to balance it out. And then I'm like, let me go again. Came back to Dubai again, second time. Same feeling. Same thing again. Cars are fully booked. All the mm. tourist stuff are always fully booked. Anything, even if you want to go to Burj Khalifa to go, go to the top, the line's packed. Yeah. Like Dubai is very busy. It's a yeah. very busy city. And I'm like, if I target the tourists, I can make some money. I came up, that's exactly what I did. I bought five cars, started with a Lamborghini, a Maserati, a GLE Mercedes, one G wagon, the previous model. And I can't remember the other car, okay. a GDS, Mercedes GDS. I bought those cars and I started to rent them. And I got myself a little office in Business Bay it was like 30 square meter office. My rent was like 50,000 dirham a year, which is like what, 10,000 pounds. Like it wasn't much, like it was a small operation, but I was happy with that operation. I was very content. And um, so I bought my five cars, I bought my home, my first home here, and I moved over, I, took, I made the move. I sold all my businesses back home, hmm. bring some more capital over just in case I needed it. And then I sat back and with those five cars, with the right marketing that I did, I started to push cars and word of mouth and then meeting people in Dubai. They know a friend of a friend that needs a car. And that's how we started. Okay. And from the five cars, I'll buy another car for myself as a personal car because I had no car to drive. And then they'll ask me for that car also. With like, Ahmed, I want that car. I'm like, okay, no problem. It's, it's money. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give it to him and uh, or, or her and then rent it. And then I'm like, I need another car. So I'll buy another car and I'll buy another car. Same thing, Domino's effect. Before I know, before I knew, it was like I needed 10, 20 cars. So I solved everything, sold my other apartment back home, rang the money up, and just, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this more serious and, and not just rely on five or 10 grand a week. I want to make serious money. And then that's how it started. So, what time frame was this? Like, what year was that? 2019, I started the business. Then COVID hit us. We had slowed down. And then once COVID finished, once COVID was over, um, Dubai was open for tourists worldwide mm. so it was the only country that was accept accepting tourists at the time yeah. so then my business went from like zero to 100 very fast so i came into the showroom and all your cars are waxed up polished up and looking nice and shiny obviously you attract customers so uh, what's your favorite my favorite car or yeah what's your favorite car right now i just bought my new i bought my dream car yeah. so it's getting wrapped at the moment it will be ready in maybe three days so i bought a baguette chiron so it'll be the first nice. uh, official car to rent in the Middle East. Most of them market that they have one for rent, yeah. but it's not for rent. There's they not use, many in Dubai. There's none. They use it for yeah. marketing purposes only. But if you ask the renter, it's never available. Or there's like, come with us, we'll drive you. We'll take you for a drive in the car. Yeah. We're going to be the first in the Middle East to actually rent the Bugatti Chiron. Self-drive. You can drive it yourself. No one's going to be following you behind as a guide. Yeah. Take the car, enjoy it. Tomorrow we'll see you and take the car back if it's a one-day booking. For the viewers, how much is it per day? Uh, it's 150K per day in Dirham. Okay. So I think it's about 35,000 pounds, I think. I'm, I'm not too sure. And the deposit is 250,000 Dirham, but it's refundable upon return. And then we'll only keep the normal protocol of 5K Dirham is for traffic fines and that, the normal standard procedure. But we're giving the rest on return. If there's no damage done to the car, there's nothing because it's part of insurance as well. Yeah. It was a strict policy to get through the insurance company because they don't really give Bugattis for rentals. But uh, we managed to make it happen. Well, when, is, when are you going to launch that? Uh, Monday. Monday, yeah. So the car will be ready Monday. this Monday, yeah. So, so if you're still in Dubai, you can come down and have a seat. You can come and see the car in <laughs> oh, process. <yeah. laughs> so it looks way. sick the way yeah. I've done it. I've just done some custom stuff to it. I didn't wrap the whole car. I just wanted to do some twerks to it, tints, make sure it's all clean. A sticker here or sticker there. It look nice. People, people want to yeah. drive, obviously, like hypercars. A lot of people drive like Lamborghinis. It's Ferraris. not that. We have to, in Dubai, you have to cater for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've got some people that go to Greece. They spend 1 million euro on a yacht for five days. When they mm. come to Dubai, yeah, you can spend that money, but on a yacht, where are you going to go? You're not going to be ho island hopping or something like that. Yeah. So they get their best hotel. They've got this money they want to spend. 
They want the best car. Yeah. Okay, we have the best cars already. We have SVJs and we have uh, SF90s and stuff like that. But they're asking for the big hypercars. Hypercars, mm -hmm. yeah. So I said, you know what? We, we'll be the first to have it in the market. And also we have the clients for it. So we have a lot of big people that come to us. Like, for example, Andrew Tate is one of our clients. He doesn't mm -hmm. rent cars from us. He supports us because he's a good friend of ours. Yeah. And he sends us his clients. So he sends us his friends who are big spenders. Yeah, and they cool. come and they, they, they throw money. And uh, I have other celebrities as well that come to us. Mm. And they send us their clients. We had uh, Richard for, uh, Rich from Fashion Nova, the CEO of Fashion Nova. Nice. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's got cool. a lot of money. So you've got big stars coming to Yeah, we to have big, big high-end uh, clients. Right. Some of them we can't name. But yeah. most of them come. They spend with us. They're always loyal to us. We look after them. You know, I go out with them sometimes on the weekends. We go for dinners. So yeah. we have a good relationship. Yeah, I think I saw the 6 9 on your page as well. 6 9 was one of our clients. Uh, the baby also, French Montana. Uh, we've had Offset. We've had a lot of them come through, man. Yeah. yeah. What was it like working with like these influencers? They're very. Stuff, some of them are very hard to work with. Some of them are very easy. Some will give us some social media posts. Some will be like, no, we're against posting. We can't post. Some of them have egos, but mm. uh, some of them are actually very cool people. Yeah. It's funny sometimes when they give you ego, like they give you, like they give you a hard time, yeah. and then you Google their net worth, and it's like five million US, and I'm like, <laughs> bro, I've got five cars that worth more. Like this yeah. laugh is like, who are you giving me attitude because of their celebrity status? So that's a nice business, man. So yeah. Compared to London, like cars to hire in Dubai are quite cheap. Why is that? What's, what's the reason? Uh, the reason being is like, we have the biggest Lamborghini dealership in the Middle East, well, in the world, sorry, the okay. biggest uh, Lamborghini dealership. We have a lot of cars and people come here, they travel here, they live here for a year or two, and then they pack up and leave and they just want to sell their cars cheap. Yeah. So mm -hmm. cars were cheaper in Dubai than anywhere else, pretty much in the world. But as the market is climbing and because of the, uh, there's no cars in the market for sale, and due to the shortages of the cars, everything's becoming more difficult and everything's becoming higher. To, to buy something, it's more higher in price. Mm. And people are buying from dealers and reselling with another 100K top-ups. So it's made the market a little bit hard. But um, we were lucky. We bought a lot of cars during COVID. So we saved a lot of money. So as people were panicking, I wasn't panicking. I was You're taking buying, a gamble. Yeah, yeah I was taking a gamble it. and just buying stuff. I bought my first 488 Spider for 500K Durham. Like... That's nothing, bro. It's like yeah. 100 something. Right now, it's still worth more. I sold it last year. Sorry, I sold it this year. 450,000 dirham. So I lost 50K dirham, but I had it for two years. You drove, and you I made so much fun. money out of the car. The car probably tripled. I made three times the car value. So um, we got lucky with a few cars. I bought a Huracan for 435,000 dirham, which till now, it doesn't exist. You go on uh, Dubizzle, low to high Lamborghini Huracan. Cheapest one's like 550. So mm. I'm talking, I sold that for 620. So we had a good we had a good run. Good run. To yeah. be honest, uh, alhamdulillah for everything. And uh, mm. I feel like you, know, you work hard, you do right by people. God okay. gives you more. You look after people, give to the poor, do sadaqah. Like you, you got to help people, man. You give to take some, you know? Yeah, I remember you had the Slingshot Polaris as well. I had the Slingshot Polaris. We had two of them. Yeah. But they were seasonal. Like yeah. you can only use them in, um, in winter times because in summer it's too hot. There's no AC in them. You yeah. pretty much sweat your ass off driving them. Things. But yeah. um. They were cheap to buy, they were 140K and we rented them for a thousand an hour. So you rent it for 140, 140 times, you got your money back. Can't go mm. wrong. Can't go wrong. You know, yeah. It's a good business. Yeah, yeah we love them, man. Like, because we don't, we don't have good those, fun. We don't have those kind of cars in the UK, London. So when we come here, we, we buy them twice now, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, you want something different. Yeah. So every time, like, we have clients that always want something different. That's it. So, like, we have to, every, every month or two, we add a new car to the fleet, we add something unique. We also speak to our existing clients, what car they prefer, what haven't they driven, what do they want to drive, what they want to buy. Yeah. So we can go get that car so they can try it and rent it from us. And then we have a little trend. Let, let's uh, talk about um, where you're originally from and a little bit about My your background. background. So my parents are from uh, Lebanon. They okay. were born and raised in uh, Lebanon. They moved to Australia in maybe the 80s. And I was born and raised in Australia. So your family, where's so your my parents are Leban Lebanese background, but I was born in Australia. So I'm, I've got my nationality is Lebanese, but I was obviously born in Australia. Yeah, because I was thinking like his brother is Lebanese, but I was giving me the Australian accent. So I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, Aussie accent. Yeah. Aussie accent. Uh, <laughs> since I've been here though, my friends from Australia are telling me I speak different. Yeah. So it's starting to change because I've been here five years talking to all different nationalities. You, know, you some people you can't understand at all, so you have to change your voice yeah. to understand like a, a Indian guy or a Pakistani guy or a Filipino guy. It's if they have a broken barrier language, you have to sort of talk like them so they understand you. Yeah. So what was it like transitioning to Dubai from Australia? Um, the start was hard, man. Difficult. Mm. You come in here, you don't know no one, you don't know anything, but everyone's here for the same thing. So you basically move here for a better life yeah. and to make money. 
So everyone that's moving here is here for the same thing. So everyone wants to make money. So yeah. this is a country like it's a big opportunity to make money in this country. That's why you got to thank UAE. Like uh, in this country, what I've made in this country, I probably wouldn't have made it anywhere else. Mm. And the support I've had from the people around me, um, the, the local dealers that I work with, well, everyone basically like they support us and they've helped us achieve where I am today. Yeah. And I have other businesses as well. So it's not the only business that I own. What other business? I've got yeah. a chauffeur company yeah. and mm -hmm. I've also got the desert camp in the buggies and quads and tours in uh, okay. the desert. So we, we manage that as well. And now I'm looking at uh, opening my own PPF garage and mm -hmm. uh, mechanical, light mechanical, just to maintain most of our cars and some external work. So if someone yeah. wants to get their car wrapped or something, they can come to us. Yeah, so and we'll, as you can we'll, see, everything here is high standard. So yeah. it will be the same thing there. So when would the PPF car up in? Uh, yeah, PPF car up in, yeah. So when would that be open? Uh, well, we, when it's in a shop today, if everything mm -hmm. goes smooth, we can be up and running by next month. So uh, so in Sheikh Zahid Road, I've seen a lot of car rental companies. How does Ahmed stand out from the crowd? Uh, man, we have the biggest showroom in the Middle East. Yeah. We have the best cars. How many cars? cars? We've got 75 cars. Mashallah. So um, pretty much every make and model. If you need a Ferrari, every Ferrari we have besides the 812 or like the unique ones which you can't order. Yeah, yeah. But like the Ferrari Roma we have, 488s we have, uh, F8 Tributos we have, the Spider version we have. Basically everything, even the Pura Sangwe is on the way. Hmm. Um, that's that We got that one from Europe because the deal is here a bit hard given our rental car companies' cars. Yeah. So we buy all our stock from Europe. Um, and then when we get them here, we register them. We save some money and we still get the car we want. Yeah. So what's your most satisfying moment as an entrepreneur? My most satisfying moment is every time I buy a new car, I look back, I'm like, Especially when I walk into a dealership, like yeah. my first time when I bought my first Rolls Royce, you know, I look to myself, I'm like, man, I'm in the Rolls Royce dealership. And I just bought a car from Rolls Royce. I never thought I'll ever achieve that, you know? Yeah. And then your dream gets bigger and bigger as you go. So like two years ago, I was talking about buying a Bugatti. Mm -hmm. And every time I did want to buy one, it's like it was holding me back because I needed more fleet. And tying up your money there for a status or to have that car isn't mm -hmm. a good business. It's not, it's not good for business because you need more cars. Yeah. Then eventually I got to the point where we're okay. I kept, our, our um, demand and supply is perfect. Uh, we can, we, can we have still room for more cars, which are on order, but it was just the right time. I got a good offer. It popped up. I'm like, yeah, I want it. I, I bought it without even seeing the car. I'm like, yeah, bring it to my showroom. I'll take it. Yeah. The price was good. I'm like, I want it. I didn't even check the color out. The car came. I'm like, shit, uh, the color's all right. It's okay, <laughs> but it's not what, it, what I wanted, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What so color is it? Right now, it's it's blue and black. Oh, okay. Are you going to change it? Or yeah, it, was, it? it was one color, so I just did the two-tone to it. Oh, so right. I added the two-tone to it. So it was, it was just originally black. So now I've made it blue and black. Yeah. What's your most hired car on the fleet and M why? Most hired car we have is Lamborghini Huracan. Everyone that comes to Dubai wants a Huracan. They want a Lambo. They want to spend like two, three thousand dirham. Mm -hmm. So that's like an entry-level supercar. Yeah. So that's our most car that's always out. The Spider version especially because they want to put the roof down and cruise around town. Yeah. And then you have the Ferrari, the second highest demand. Ferrari, yeah? Ferrari 488 or F8, the new F8. So is there any like uh, popular entrepreneurial advice that you disagree with at all? That I disagree with? Everyone has their own opinion. Mm. Um, I just see, uh, I only look at myself and worry about myself. Whatever mm. goes on out there in the world, I don't really follow. I do my own thing. And sometimes people can give you wrong advice. So sometimes you got to take your own advice and oh. then take the risk and, and don't be scared and get up, go to work. Like I'm, I'm here seven days a week, bro. Mm. Uh, Okay, I do go home. I do have my own time. If I want to take a day off, I can take a day off. But I enjoy coming to, to the office. We have fun. There's always people coming around. There's always funny stories. There's always someone new to Dubai and it's got no yeah. idea and makes mm. us laugh. Like, we, we have a laugh at a lot of things. You yeah. You're quite famous on TikTok. Yeah. Um, as an influencer, you are advertising your business. A lot of business comes from social media yeah. and, and obviously networking. And uh, every time I do go out to places and stuff, I meet new people. I give them my business card. I explain a bit of what I do. And everyone needs a friend that... Everyone has someone that comes to Dubai that needs a car or rent a car mm. or, or needs advice or wants to buy a car. So I give them advice of what to buy, how, how much to spend. And yeah. from being nice to people, I guess, man, they send you everyone else. Yeah. What, what would you say is a non-negotiable when starting a business like a car rental company? It's just, it's not that easy, man. Mm. Like there's a lot of, everything's pretty much, everything's, you got to be strict with everything you do. The first time I saw your page was on Instagram. I saw the Mansuri uh, video on the desert. And I was thinking, yeah, this supercar, like car hire company um, looks great. They've got good, good videos. So you like, you're advertising most of your cars on the desert with nice scenery. Uh, do you reckon that helps a lot? Of course, all our photos are done in the desert. Yeah. So all our, 
on, if you go on our website, every car that we have is taken in the same location, same position. I'm pretty OCD. So when someone looks at our website, they say, these guys are professional. Yeah. Like mm. everything's in there. They're all owned by us. We're not outsourcing cars. We don't have fake images online. Yeah. They're our cars. They're our photos. And I get pissed off when other people copy our photos and use them on their websites. It's because like they, we don't give them cars. Yeah. We don't know them. And why are they taking our hard work and effort to post on their website? So do you get people stealing like your pictures? Heaps of times. Now we've got a guy that our actual photographer that we use. He's got a he's got a lawyer company sort of thing that's copy, he's copyrighted all our images and they've mm. got a system that scans all the internet and it shows who's used our photos and he mm. sent them all legal notices. Yeah, so yesterday I got someone that sent me a message because like, bro, I've I've received a thousand euro court fee. He has to go to court. Can you remove it? I've removed the, the photo off my website. I'm like, it's not up to me. You have to contact the lawyers. It's not mine. I'm not the photographer. He's chosen that that route to go down because they're even selling them on Shutterstock. So our photos are getting sold online. Hundred dollars, yeah. two hundred dollars a photo. And they yeah. our work. I yeah. pay for him. He's the photographer. Like, yeah. Yeah. How does that make you feel then? Like people when people start Look, it feels like we're stuff. doing something good. Yeah. For me, I don't I don't mind. Like yeah. I know we're doing something good. For people to use your photos or use your the way you market and copy your style means you're doing something well. Hmm. Yeah. Have you been positive? Yeah. Have you been in a situation where someone has an accident? What was been your reaction with one of your cars? When I first started, every time there was an accident, I used to get cut. I'm like, man, it's my car. And now you get to the point where like it happens. It's part of business. You got to accept it. You can't love the car anymore. So there'll be a car that I really love. I'd be like to the boys, this car, you have to be super careful when you drive it, make sure no one damages it. I want like extra videos on this car. And after three months, it's like, yeah, whatever. Like it becomes nothing. You don't care. You don't, you, that, that happiness sort of goes away. You want something bigger and better. You want something bigger and better. It just keeps on going. So uh, how do you know when you've got like a winning business idea? Uh, uh, like a good business idea, like yeah. a new one, like yeah. a new venture. Uh, I scope the market. Like for example, why I'm opening the PPF shop. I spend maybe 100K a month in PPF and some ceramic works and, and repair of rims. For example, I did 98 rims last month. So it costs money. So like, even if I don't really make money from the business and I save costs and I break even, mm -hmm. at least I'm not paying out of my pocket. I'm not losing that couple of hundred thousand a month. It goes in my pocket. So if you calculate at the end of the year, it's extra 3 million, 4 million there, I'm saving. Yeah. It's still money, man. Yeah, because a, a, a lot of people, they start a business and they might not uh, make the turnover they want until a certain period of time. When do you think it's the right time to decide that it's not the correct business idea? A so, lot of the businesses don't work out straight away. Yeah. You've got to be patient mm -hmm. and uh, it depends on what field you're doing and how you're targeting everything. And if you go into a market that's, if you do something unique mm -hmm. and no one else is doing it and you know there's a demand for it, definitely go for it. Um, if you're going into something that's got a lot of business like PPF, there's a lot of them. Why I haven't opened in three years a PPF shop is because there's so many. In my street alone, if you go outside, there's like five shops next door to each other. Or doing PPF, yeah. but if you call them, they're busy. So I've rang them to take my cars. They're sorry, I'm busy. Bring it on Monday. Yeah. They're not even accepting your work. They're rejecting. So you want so it in house? You want yeah. all yours so in house? So if I do it in house, I pay salaries. I buy my own film, save money. Yeah. And it, it's Instead a benefit for us, man. Yeah. yeah. So what was the word? And I know that I'm on top of it, and I know they're using the best quality film. I'm not getting ripped off. Mm. Maybe they're using Chinese products, and and really it's it's meant to. They're selling you an American product, and you're paying double the price for it, and it's yeah. the same. You know what I mean? Like. At least you know you're feeling comfortable. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. So what are the biggest challenges of uh, running a car? Biggest company? challenges that we have running a rental car company. There is competition. Mm. I'm not going to say there's none. Um, especially online. with Marketing, Google and all that kind of stuff. Like our budget, we spend so much money every month. And um, the the way people operate. And, and there's a lot of things that, mm. that go into it as well. Yeah. So what, what were the like, biggest challenges you faced when you first started out as well? The challenges that I faced when I, when I first started, insurance companies, um, mm. tracking companies. Like I used three, four tracking companies till I found the right one. One was telling me my car was in the Palm Jumeirah, but the car was in the impound. Yeah. Like you start to learn and you're like, man, these guys, they're not on top of things. So tracking companies, insurance companies with accidents, how to deal with companies, how to deal with panel beaters, how to deal with spray painters mm. and garages. Like they'll give you a quote of 10K, the approval of 10,000, but the car needs 30K to repair. Mm. So these things, they're all challenging when you first open. And then um, the, the fines, the traffic fines and the police cases and if people don't pay, they have an accident and run away. How are you going to do with that moment? How are you going to deal with it? It's, it's a, yeah, a lot of challenges in rental car. So how do you do with it? Let's say if someone's speeding and stuff, like how, what would you do? We have tracking devices in the car. Mm. If we get too many alerts, we message them to slow down. If they don't listen, tell them again to slow down. On the third time, we switch off the car. We go collect the car. Yeah. I've never done that in the past four years. They always listen. They say, yeah. sorry, man, we won't do it again. Or I was just trying out the car. And it's fair enough. We know they want to enjoy the car. But it's for their safety as well. Something goes wrong, man. If something happens, it's a headache for us. Definitely, yeah. You know, and for them, we don't want nothing to happen to them. If someone have an accident, get an injury or something like that. So yeah.
Yeah. All your cars automatic, man. All of our cars are automatic. It's easier for us uh, to rent them. Uh, there's not many people who have manual experience, and if they have an accident or if they, if they don't know how to drive, it can lead to an accident. Yeah, you haven't got any classics, have you? We do have classics, but not for rent. They're my personal cars. Just personal collection. Yeah, yeah personal collection. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, we so can rent classics, but having a classic for rent, if something goes wrong, you're looking for parts. It's yeah. Not, and the car's going up in value. Why would you want to use it for rent? Yeah, yeah. doesn't make sense. So how did you build this customer base? Because I see obviously you've got well, a lot of celebrities coming. Oh, you Word of you've got mouth, Google, uh, marketing, social media, uh, basically everything. And uh, the more we did good by people, they refer people. You yeah. don't take the deposits, give them the deposits back. They refer people. You know, a lot of the other companies, they just they here for today, not for tomorrow. Yeah. With any, that, that's a sad thing. Yeah. With any like specific strategies that you used? There's strategies, but we can't say. Oh, right. <laughs> Competitors will be watching. Secrets, me. yeah. Secrets. I'm sure they all follow me, and I'm sure they all watch what I do. Yeah. yeah. You see them all copying our videos. Whatever they think is going viral here, they try to do the same. Mm. It doesn't work. Yeah, definitely. It's, people follow people follow me on social media for me as well, not just the brand. You know. Yeah. They they like seeing what I do. They like my success story, and and that's the reason why people I get more views than other people. You can do the same video, you won't get the same views. Mm. Yeah, you know? you're, you're unique. You've got your yeah. unique. I've got my own. Yeah, I've got my own touch. Yeah, so how do, how do you uh, limit the risk in your business? Man, that's, that's a difficult one because you don't know what's going, what's ahead. You yeah. can give a card to someone that's 30 years old, that's had a license for 10 years and still have an accident. Um, we do take our, pro we have our own protocols in place. Mm. We make sure all the cars in, in perfect working condition and uh, we just pray and everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. We take it as it comes day by day. Yeah, because it must be a lot, like, especially with cars that are worth this much we do have a system though it shows us on our system if someone's been blacklisted with any other rental car company mm. so if we know they've been blacklisted we don't give them cars yeah. um, we try to avoid giving to young young kids especially performance cars and so uh, what's the age then what's the age that? we can rent to anyone uh, above 21 mm. and we have our insurance policy lets anyone that's 18, 18. drive also yeah. so pretty much anyone over 18. nice uh, so like uh, let's talk about motivation like, how do you get motivated Motivation, man. Money motivates me. Yeah. That's very straightforward. <laughs> Every day I wake up, I come to the office, I'm making money. It makes me come again and again and again. And yeah. uh, looking at what I'm growing every day and I see the thing expand and have more cars on my list. And yeah, it motivates me every day, man, to be better and better and better. Is there a certain yeah. figure like you want to reach that you retire on I said or that not? At, I said that at 30 cars, I was going to stop. Then I said <laughs> that at 40. Then I said that at 50. Now my aim is 100. But if the supply is there and the demand is there, why not expand? You're, still, you're losing money. You want them to go elsewhere? No, you want them for you. Hire more staff, build the business, expand. If we have to relocate, we'll relocate. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people watching right now, they might want to know like what are the the top three personality traits to become a successful entrepreneur. Look, uh, I feel hard work is definitely on the list, hmm. and using your money to make money. Hmm. And uh, like, yeah, I got money in the bank. Don't get me wrong. What do they offer you? 2% interest? You can flip that money and make so much more money with it. So I venture out and I use, I have side hustles. I, you know, I've got the chauffeur company that's make, bringing me money. I've got the, the buggies that's bringing me money. I've got this shop that's bringing me money. And now if we do the, the wrapping shop, that'll bring me money. Yeah. So more than one source of income and using your money elsewhere. And like, if you just leave it sitting in the bank, it does nothing. It just sits there. I, I, I have a lot of properties. I flip them. I do renovations. I sell them. So mm. they're another side hustle that I do. It's like a small business that I do. You do properties, uh, more so. like a private thing that I do. Okay. And um, I'm doing very well with the off-plan properties in Dubai. So you buy something off-plan, you sell it. I have some yeah. good agents. Uh, I might think of opening a, a real estate firm next year, depending on how I go. Like last year alone, I sold over 100 million dirham in property yeah. alone. And I'm not an agent. They're just the friends and family members and people that want to relocate yeah. or bring their money over to, to do something here. Yeah. So there's definitely opportunity for that as well. But right now, I'm just... Uh, the, my main focus is my rent car company because I have a passion for it. Mm, yeah. I love it. So yeah, you, you must be quite busy. So how do, you, busy. How, do, how do you balance your personal life? Very busy. Business? Like I was one hour late to the podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm always late, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm very busy. Like I've got a guy in the office. My insurance broker has been waiting for me for an hour. I feel bad. But man, it's, things pop up during the day and yeah. the opportunities. So I jump on it. I don't let it go, you know? Yeah. And I just try to balance it. And by the time I get home and I'm thrashed, I turn on the TV watch about 10, 20 minutes of TV. Now I'm, I'm out cold till the morning, get up, go to the gym, start my day again, repeat again. Something yeah. pops up every single day in Dubai, there's an opportunity. Some yeah. people want to travel, they want to leave, they want to sell their watches, they want to sell their apartment, they've gone bust. A lot of people come to Dubai with their little cash flow. They want to be, live like ballers. They spend it all, realize they're broke again. They start mm -hmm. to sell their watches. 
Mm. I've had people sell their watches to rent cars and they'll go back to, to wherever they're from and, and start again, which uh, it is what it is, you know. So yeah. they come here with the Dubai dream, they live that life and they go down very fast. They spend more than they make. Yeah. So are you looking to expand anyway, like Europe, America? Um, I've been, someone has called me from Miami to open in Miami. They want to use our name in Miami. Okay. Um, we're in talks with that at the moment. Saudi also, I have a Saudi guy that had contacted me oh. as well, wants to open up in Saudi Arabia. I, I feel Saudi Arabia will be a good market. They, as per talks as well, in Ras Al Khaimah, they're going to be opening the casino soon. If that works out well, they're going to have an Aria there, a Bellagio Hotel and MGM Grand. So I think that they're going to try sort of be like a Vegas there. Mm. If that works, I'll open another branch there. But right now, I'm still focusing on Dubai. So yeah. you, uh, Andrew Tate came to your garage. Yeah, what was did. that for? Uh, he came came to say hello. Yeah, he came. He was he came in the Bugatti. Came. We had a laugh. We chill. I still speak to him. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's right. good. He's good. Yeah, yeah. he's got his little problems, but everyone faces problems. You know, mm. it's the way it's you got to go past that. You know. Yeah. How, how was he? How was he like? Like interaction wise, very it? nice guy, man. Some people hate him. Uh, that's their opinion. I like him. That's my opinion. Yeah. He's done nothing wrong to me. He's done nothing to harm me. He sent me clients. He's a good guy. And how, how did you? How did that interaction come about? Uh, through a friend. Through a friend. He introduced me to him. Nice. So when he comes here, we cater for him. He's got his own cars. He doesn't need to rent cars, but he likes a car yeah. with a driver, like a car with a chauffeur. Oh, so okay. we send him a car with a chauffeur all the time. If he wants, to pick up his friends, go here, go there. We've got someone standby for him all day. Yeah. He's a proper baller. He's a real G. Definitely top two. Yeah. yeah. Top G. <laughs> so any tips for like, uh, just say someone wants to start a supercar. If company. someone wants to start a supercar company, I get that inquiry. Like, yeah, I get too many people ring me that they always ring me for that same question. How would someone start? You need money. Yeah. That's one. Um, you need a base. Two, you need to have some clients or people that are going to support you. Mm. And the same way I did it, man. Same thing, man. Start, go buy the right cars, uh, target the right people, do the marketing, whether you're busy or not. Look, there's a lot of companies closing down mm. in Dubai because they can't keep up with the bills, the expenses. But if you start small, Five, six cars, manage it yourself, have one driver, one admin, keep your cost low, you can make money. Hmm. And then you expand and you slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger. So is now, it? I never thought I'll get this big, to be honest. In yeah. the start, so would you lease cars or buy it cash? I bought cars. You have to buy them. Cash. I'll not give you a loan until your business is running for more than two years. Hmm. Your trade license has to be open for two years. And you got to show serious money that's coming in. And even if the banks give you a loan, it's like one million dirham, two million dirham, buys you one car, cool. two cars. Yeah. And then eventually you build your profile with them. You can buy another two or three cars, but by the time that happens, you're five years in. But man, with your normal cars that you buy in cash anyway, they, that's all your money. So if you don't spend much and you save your money for the first two, three years mm. and invest that money back into more cars, that's how you make the money. It's a dominoes effect. I've got 70 cars, for example. I buy one tomorrow. I've got 70 paying off the 71. So easy. Yeah. One month, two weeks, three weeks, boom, another car. You've yeah. got 71 paying off 72. Yeah. This month, I added four cars to the fleet. The Bugatti, same day, I bought the Bugatti. I bought a Eurus purple one. Hmm. I bought a Huracan Evo Spider and a Mercedes Geely yeah. all in one week. And I wasn't expecting the Bugatti to come. And I had all this money aside ready for all my other cars that are coming now. But I'll be all right. Yeah. I so, kick on. I'm, I'll so, when you so when you first started, um, what did you do to keep the costs low and keep the profits That's high? why I had this office that was very cheap, 50,000 yeah. dirham. I had one admin. The sales guy that was working at Five Palm was working for me and myself. Yeah. There seven days a week. It was low cost. I had bills included. Yeah. I had like everything was included through the hotel, was in the hotel. So I had some clients as well. But it was a four star hotel. So the clients they had they didn't want Lambos, they wanted cheaper cars. Mm. But sometimes they'll still take some cars. And from there, I started to. And then when I moved into this place, the rent was like 1 million dirham at the time. Mm. And I was like, I'm jumping from 50K to a million dirham. I'm like, I don't want to spend that much. So I signed a three year lease. Now, next year, my lease is up. I'm like, damn, I know he's already charging next door for the same size as this, like 3 million, 4 million. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know, expanded. next year I might not be here. I might be in a bigger showroom or I might stay. If he looks after me with the rent, I'll stay here. Yeah, so you'd say start off with a smaller, cheaper Small, showroom. Small, make as much as money as you can. Yeah. And then, like, to be honest, it was less stressful when I had that mm. small little office. My 10 cars, I was happy and content. I was no stress. When I came here, it's stress, but I'm too far in. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to quit. Yeah, I'm, I'm making money, so I just let it roll. It's a roller coaster, man. Definitely. How old are you? You look quite young. I'm 33. So 33. would you say like and networking got you to where you are now? 100%. So networking, networking meeting key. people. Every single day yeah. I meet someone. Yeah. Every single day I meet someone new. So I had someone that owns a yacht company in Dubai. 
wants to collab with us for yachts and cars. So he's got clients, he'll send them to us. If we have yacht clients, we send them to him. So it's like a fair, fair trade, fair, trade. A fair play sort of thing. We make money. Mashallah, yeah, you've got a good business, yeah, good idea. Yeah. You've got the clients. And you've got the cars it. as well. Making the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is there something in particular that keeps you like, like focused and keeps you going? Yes, of course. We want to be the best. Yeah. So when you want to be the best at something, you have to be every day, you know, wake up, do the same thing every day, just see what's the best, what you can do to improve. Uh, what cars are we missing? How are we going to be more unique? Let's mm. create a crazy idea. Let's create a crazy color on a car. Let's put a body kit on this car. Let's put an exhaust on this car. Let's be different. Let's be different. It's all about being different in this country. So and you, you think know, that's yeah, what keeps you all top. our cars are loud, like the colors are loud, mm. lime greens, purples, blues, baby blues, because people want to take photos for Instagram. Yeah. And other rental car companies laugh, like, how's he even renting that car? It's an ugly color. We know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know? so do you think that's what keeps you at the top? 100%. Are you investing in like jewelry? You got like a nice piece there. Watch. Yeah, I I do for backup, man. These are backup Pendant, lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a few watches. I've got a few a few iced out chains and stuff. Yeah, I like to change it up. You know, if I've got a stainless set. I've got a white gold set, yellow gold set, rose gold set. Yeah. Depends what I'm wearing, what the event is, or whatever. I like my jewelry, man. I like to spoil myself. Yeah. What yeah. What advice would you give to the viewers if they wanted to start a business? My main advice is if you have a passion for something, go with your passion. Mm. I love cars. So that's why I'm more focused on this than anything else. Yeah. And I drive them every day with a smile. I come to work with a smile and it motivates you to get up and go to work. If you're working for something that you don't like doing or you're just doing it for the money, like uh, you get bored, you yeah. get over it. You know, I know people that have businesses, for example, they clean, they clean sewers all day. They're yeah. on top dollar. Do you think he likes it? He doesn't like it. If, you clean, if you're driving a Ferrari to work every day and you're chilling and you're making money, you're going to like it. So everyone has their own little. Yes. So you say follow your passion. Yeah, follow your passions 100%. That, that's what I believe in. Yeah. What do you drive daily? What's your favorite? I, I drive everything, bro. Whatever yeah. I like to drive. Like we've got the new XM now, the BMW XM. It's a nice daily car, 650 horsepower. Oh, nice. uh, I'll drive that for a month or whatever. Yeah. If there's a booking on it, I'll give it to a customer. I'll jump into Euros. I'll jump yeah. into something You've got else. A lot of options. You can yeah, whatever's <laughs> available. But in peak season, it gets that busy. There's no cars available. Yeah. So then I have to block a certain car for me and tell them don't rent it to no one. Yeah. Right now, my favorite is the, the Range Rover Vogue, the, the autobiography, the new one. Comfortable. Oh, yeah. You know, when you go out, big group, they can fit easy. It's nice on turns. Mm. Uh, it looks sick. It's uh, blacked out. It yeah. looks nice, man. What about it's the decent. big B, Bugatti? That, to be honest, I've only driven it once and I drove it with no plates because it's not registered yet. So once the, I got it three weeks ago, I bought it three weeks ago. We waited for the wrap to come from London and then we had the aid, everything was closed. So as soon as the wrap gets here, which we got here, they started wrapping it this Monday. Mm. So they said to me, it'll be ready by next Monday. So um, I only drove it around the block. So I didn't really get a chance to feel the way it drives or anything like that. But it's a Bugatti at the end of the day. So. Yeah, it's coming in is it Monday, isn't it? Yeah, Monday will be here. Monday, yeah, we'll have a look at it now. Come, come on Monday. Come check it out. Check yeah, it. 100%. <laughs> Inshallah. You're welcome. So, so what good. are your future plans then? So in terms My future of plans, man, keep this business running, uh, expand a little bit more, get to the 100 cars that I want, and then I'll think of what the next step is. Um, I'm focusing on some side, like buying land and building mm. to, to, to start doing development. That'll probably be the next project. Yeah. So I'll start building off plan. Like I'll sell them off plan. I'll do some units. And the chauffeur company, to expand the chauffeur company a little bit more, we just uh, partnered with uh, Forbes Middle East. Hmm. So uh, they, they posted us on the official social media and all on their websites and stuff. Forbes, yeah? Yeah, Forbes Middle East. Yes, it's a big it's achievement big, for yeah. us. We're also on Emirates Airlines. So when you're on the plane, you can see our videos playing. Emirates as well? Yes, yeah, so our ads run on, on the plane. That's big. Um, so the, the future goal is like, get this to where I want it to be, push the chauffeur company to where I want it to be, push the desert where I want it to be, mm -hmm. and then probably start focusing on, on properties. Yeah. If I get a good offer for this business, will I sell? I don't know. I have been offered recently yeah. 150 million. I didn't want to sell. And they offered me half the business to stay here. But if I, if I sell for a good value, I wouldn't want to work for anyone else. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Any so, more hyper cars like Pagani, Zonda, yeah, we, The next car after the Bugatti will be a Koenigsegg. Koenigsegg, yeah. Yeah, and then something something new, whatever pops up, like something weird or like those new cars that they're bringing out. Yeah. Uh, like Apollos and all that stuff. There's they're not really high cars. demand, but like I'll start to collect cars. Yes. Nice. So I'll start to collect some hyper cars for myself. If they rent, they rent. They don't rent, I don't care. Mm. So yeah, we'll wrap this podcast up with our final question. Does money buy happiness? Does money buy happiness? Not exactly, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. It's a hard quick look, money does make you happier. Yeah. But does it buy happiness? No. I think family does. Family, family brings you the biggest happiness. You know, I've got a little boy, he's four years old. Every day I see him, he puts a smile on my face. 
yes, money makes me happy, but if, if you strip it all away from me and leave me with my son, I'll still be happy because mm -hmm. he brings me happiness, you know? Definitely. So I okay. think family, family is always first mm. and then money, yeah. but you need money to have a good life. Exactly. 100%, I agree. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ahmed. It's been a pleasure thank you, um, doing a podcast with you, checking out your supercar collection, welcome, luxury supercar rentals. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you come check out luxury supercar rentals in Dubai. Yeah. I'm sure brother Ahmed will give you a good deal. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you want to learn more about cash flow and businesses, um, catch you in the next one. Take care.